For those who scrap electronic waste, the process of identifying and grading circuit boards can be a little bit confusing. This series will help you to identify e-waste circuit boards. In today's episode, peripheral boards, high grade versus low grade. In previous episodes, we discussed how to differentiate between low-grade boards, mid-grade boards, and we started to talk about peripheral-grade boards. Come on, let's dive in and take a look at peripheral boards and the difference between a peripheral low-grade board and a peripheral high-grade board. We are going to base our discussion of peripheral grade boards using the board sort methodology for grading. Boardsort.com is one of the most sophisticated e-waste buyers in the United States and they have a large number of categories that boards can fall into. Now this sometimes gives people some angst because they feel like they have to get it perfect. Trust me, you don't have to get it perfect. You just have to give it your best go based on the information that we share here and the information that is shared on the boardsort.com forum, which I highly recommend everybody visit periodically. In the previous videos of this series, we examined low-grade boards and mid-grade boards. While we were talking about the mid-grade boards, we gave a key factor, and that is that there should be no visible gold in the mid-grade board bin. As with any rule of thumb, there are going to be exceptions. So we're going to look at those cases where there is visible gold, but it's a mid-grade board, and another case where there's no visible gold, but it's a peripheral board. Remember, peripheral they call it peripheral because most of these boards will come out of peripheral devices. But don't let the name confuse you. Most of them will come out of a peripheral device. But you might have a board that is classified as a peripheral board because it has visible gold and it's not as good as some other types of boards. Hence, it is a peripheral board. What we really want to focus on is Differentiating between the mid-grade and the peripherals, i.e. there's visible gold, and then how do you differentiate between a peripheral high-grade board and a peripheral low-grade board? A good rule of thumb to use when you're differentiating between peripheral high-grade or peripheral low-grade is that the peripheral high-grade should have three, at least three times the density population of quality components. Those would be gold bearing components like ICs, flat packs, BGAs. If you look at these two boards, what you can see is this board is very densely populated with a great big IC or flat pack, another IC, the gold edge crystal oscillators, a number of other smaller components in addition to the gold plated pins. This board, however, yes, it's technically a peripheral board because it has gold-plated pins, gold-plated pins. There is visible gold. So this is a peripheral board, but there isn't much on it in the way of good components. In fact, the only thing that makes this peripheral is the gold-plated pins and gold-plated pins in this connector. So. Uh, this is probably the lowest of low for peripheral low-grade boards. So if you use this as a as it's sort of a low-end benchmark, and then you compare it to something of this nature, you can easily see why this would be called a peripheral high-grade board. Now let's look at something that is perhaps not as densely populated as our previous example. Here we have gold-plated pins, gold-plated pins, gold-plated pins. So we have a peripheral high-grade or peripheral board. 
but we really don't have much in the way of chips on this. We have this IC, we've got some LEDs, we just don't really have much of anything in the way of components. So this would also be a peripheral low grade board. There's obvious visible gold in these gold plated pins, but you just don't have much in the way of good components to get any gold from. All right, now this board, as I hold it in the light at various angles, you should be able to see the visible gold on this board, which should make it a peripheral board, but there really are no components of any great value on this board. There might be gold plating inside of this older style resistor, maybe some of these other ones. These older components, yeah, maybe there's silver in there, maybe not. Maybe there's silver connectors inside of here, but this board just doesn't have much going for it other than the gold enig to make it a peripheral board. So this is an example of the exception to the rule there's visible gold, but this is a mid-grade board because there's no components of any value on this. Here we have a clearer example from a recent uh, pickup that we did. This board clearly has gold, visible gold on it, so you'd say, oh, it's peripheral board. Well, no, it's not, right? It's a power supply. It came out of a server. So even though it has visible gold, it's you can't sell it as a Goldfinger card or a... Uh, peripheral board of any sort. You take those gold fingers off, sell the gold fingers, and then sell the rest of the board as either mid-grade to boardsort.com or whatever your local yard would pay, low grade or mid-grade. Now here we have an interesting example because when you look at this board, you don't see any obvious visible gold. But inside of this socket, there were gold plated pins. And because there were gold plated pins that were inside of that socket, the pins that are inside that actually make up the socket itself are most likely gold plated. Plus, if you look at the density of gold, potential gold bearing material in these ICs, you can see that this board is relatively well populated. This is a pretty densely populated board for ICs. So this is definitely going to be a peripheral grade board. And even though it doesn't have any visible gold, it's going to be a high grade peripheral board because it is so densely populated with components. Now remember that mid grade board next to it, it's got visible gold, but all the components are junk. When we look at a board like this, we see that it has many ICs. It has gold plated pins in this connector, in this connector. There's visible gold, so this is a peripheral board. But when we look at the population of junk, a transformer, capacitors, more capacitors, heat sinks that make up the real weight of this board, what you quickly come away with is there's more junk weight than there is potential gold bearing weight. So you would categorize this as a peripheral low grade. I know there's a lot of you that are saying, but look at all those ICs. There's ICs and MLCCs and all kinds of things, but they're very, very small compared to the weight of all this other stuff. Now, how can we transform something like this board into a peripheral high-grade board? Well, here's an example. This board, oops, this board is kind of interesting because we have power components here, power components up here, but then we have lots of ICs and socket-mounted ICs and flat packs so, yeah, <laughs> it's very frustrating because you've got this stuff here, 
which is downgrading the overall value of the board. <clears throat> so what are we going to do with this? There's nothing on the back. It is at a minimum a mid-grade board, but we know it's better than that because it has all of these ICs and components on it. So it's going to be a peripheral grade board. Now, in order to justify making this a peripheral high grade, I'm going to remove this transformer, that transformer, and a couple of these clunky heat sinks. What that does is that removes a bit of weight because, you know, transformers are heavy, but there's not, these things are what's taking away the value of the board. So by removing those, uh, I can turn this into a peripheral high grade with confidence. All right, so let's get these guys off of here. Let's see if we can do that real quick for y'all. Just take a chisel, knock off the legs. Now that can go with your transformers or your small electric motors, however your yard buys those. Still have one more leg inside of here. There we go. All right, so there's another transformer. Uh, so we're getting there. We've removed quite a bit of junk from this. This is a socket mounted IC. So you could be saying to yourself, well, Chris lets us pull socket mounted ICs. Just understand, if you do that, you're really taking away a lot of the value from this board. You know, socket mounted, socket mounted, socket mounted. Those are the three best chips on this board. If you remove those, this is no longer going to be a peripheral high grade board. You know, now you've made it peripheral low grade at best, probably mid grade. All right, now let's see what we can do about getting rid of some of this other extraneous stuff that's taking away value here. Oh, that's easy. These MOSFET heat sinks uh, are coming off real easy. There we go. So we were able to turn this board into a peripheral high grade by removing big transformers that were on it and a number of heat sinks that simply weren't contributing to the value of the board. We left in the socket mounted ICs and all the other ICs and BGAs and such that are on this board in order to ensure that we retain the value as a peripheral high grade board. If we had removed these ICs, we would have lowered this to a peripheral low grade board because these are where the real good potential gold is. Now these other ICs and such and BGAs are going to have uh, potential gold in them as well, but let's face it, we all know that's where the value is on this board. And if you're asking yourself, well, wait a minute, where's the gold, where's the visible gold where well, you've got this connector end over here that is going to have gold-plated pins? Plus, depending upon the way the light is shining on this, you might be able to see the little hints of gold around these connector pads. Here we have another nice example of a peripheral high-grade board. You have gold-plated pins, gold-plated pins. There's some very obvious visible gold on this board. It's actually quite pretty. And if you look at it, you can see that there's a pretty dense population of ICs. There's a great big socket-mounted IC right there. There's a, another socket-mounted, some people call it a socket-mounted flat pack. Uh, some people would call that an IC. You know, it depends upon your level of your background and who taught you what. This is going to be gold-plated pins inside of here. Yes, we have a whole bunch of resistors and capacitors and stuff, but they're really small 
relative to the ICs. And we also have some potential older tantalum, epoxy of tantalum capacitors in here as well. So very clearly a peripheral high grade board. When you see a peripheral high grade board, you, you just know it. it. You just look at it and you say, oh yeah, I get it. Now we have a very interesting, almost a dilemma, almost, but all you have to do is go back to your basic principles. It's at a minimum, a mid-grade board. But if you look at this socket right here, you can see visible gold. If you look at these pins, some of them are gold-plated pins. So we have visible gold on this board. That makes it a peripheral board. If we look at the density of the potential gold-bearing material population, look at the number of ICs that are on this board. They're all over the board. And there's oscillators. And there are socket-mounted ICs. So we can very easily say to ourselves, yes, this is a high-grade peripheral board. Very densely populated, no question about it. If you compare that board and this board, you very easily say, oh yeah, these are both peripheral high-grade boards. They're well densely populated with potential gold-bearing material. But if you compare them to these boards, <laughs> yeah, these very clearly become, stand out as a peripheral low grade on the top or the mid grade on the bottom. One source of peripheral boards you may literally be looking at right now, and that is a flat screen computer monitor. Very likely it will have a finger strip board. There's a bunch of obvious visible gold on the finger strip board. Don't get excited, it's Enig, it's not very thick. It also has a lot of components given the weight and size of the board. So the finger strip board from the flat screen monitors and TVs is a good source of a peripheral high grade board. Now in the case of this monitor, it also had a separate controller board that was a peripheral high grade board. Yeah, it's got some junk on it, but for the size of the board and the amount of components that are on it, it's a peripheral high-grade board. Now, don't confuse board sorts grading criteria with your local yard. If you are selling to your local yard, they may use a very different grading criteria. These boards might be considered mid-grade boards in your yard. These boards might be considered mid-grade boards for your scrapyard. For my scrap yard, I might get away with putting these in with my green motherboards, maybe. But that definitely would go in my mid-grades. These would go in the mid-grades. This would definitely go in the mid-grades. So you need to understand your buyer and how they are grading the material. When you're selling it, it all comes down to your buyer. But frequently on my channel and a lot of other channels, especially here in the US, we use the boardsort.com grading criteria because it's a standard that we can all refer to. We can see the pictures on their website. We can go to their forum and see the discussions about why things are what they are. I get it. It can be confusing sometimes. I understand completely. I still sometimes have questions and will have to ask Chris at boardsort.com to help me identify something, especially when we're talking about things that are on the edge, mid-grade to peripheral or peripheral high versus peripheral low. Some things are very obvious. Some things you kind of scratch your head and you're like, well, the important thing to remember is don't get panicked over it. These are just boards. It's just scrap. Do your best 
to identify the boards based on what you have learned on this channel, on the boardsort.com forum, and other channels that are out there. Chris and his people understand if you're selling at the boardsort.com, they know that sometimes people are gonna make mistakes. The worst that'll happen is they regrade some of the material in your box. Some of it will get upgraded, some of it downgraded if you've made mistakes. I can tell you from personal experience that boardsort.com has increased the value of some of my material because I was too conservative in my grading. So they will grade it properly and they will let you know. You'll get an email, you'll get confirmation if they had any different grading from what you put it in as when you filled out the invoice with them. So again, do not panic. Don't get all upset and worried about it. Do the best you can, and the worst that's gonna happen is, Chris and those guys will regrade it when they get it. Now don't make a habit of calling stuff peripheral high grade that should be mid grade. You'll hear about that too if you play that game. But if you're doing your best, they'll know. And trust me, they'll work with you because they wanna help you get better at this. I understand completely, Chris understands completely that sometimes it's not clear and sometimes you're going with a gut call on the borderline stuff. And you know what, if you have some borderline stuff that's in with a whole bunch of very obvious high grade stuff, it's not gonna be a big deal. Okay, so look, just relax, do the best you can, have fun, all right? There are plenty of things to stress out over in our world today. Grading your board should not be one of them. Do the best you can, have fun with it, and Chris will let you know if they had to make any adjustments. I hope you're enjoying this series on how to grade your printed circuit boards. We still have plenty more to go through, but boy howdy, I know we've tackled the tough ones right here, going from mid-grades into the peripherals. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them, and I'll be happy to help you as you go through your effort to identify the boards that you have. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next one.